Okay, so more free flowing thought and organized problem solving because those two mind mapping and just getting involved in the chaos of information so it can finally come to order when all the conditions are right. And that's why I advocate those of you who want to have an amazing future of unlimited potential as far as unlimited intellectual potential, that you pay attention to your body and your spirit, I guess, and understand where I'm coming from. If you have the capacity to, you may not. Because eventually, when you bring it, when you read so many different things or everything that you've been ever been exposed to your whole life, assuming you can release the demons, everything that will come together based upon your intention, what you're focusing on. And so it was proof last night that I was, this whole weekend I was delving into the science part because I studied a lot of the the astrophysics and astronomy and I was going back and forth a few years ago with John around the universe and one and when I was beginning to write this last book that I put out there trying to figure out where I was going to come from and so I studied so much of the universe of stars of cells of the colors the or what do you call those the rainbow the prisms the colors of the rainbow, what heat they give off of coming towards you or away from you. I mean, there was no stone left unturned. If there was a stone left unturned, it would be overturned at some point. So I studied a lot of that. I even wrote a lot about that. I even developed my own diagrams and or just copied the diagrams and regurgitated because that's also necessary to understand the world that I live in. When I was doing word processing, I would find it fun to copy a document and have it look exactly like another document from scratch. So I understood how to work the system of Word and Excel and PowerPoint. So, yeah. So all that studying and then releasing those demons. What are the demons? The demons of diversity. Too much diversity in your body becomes like it clogs up the body's ability to make the connections. It Just like with traffic out there. When you have clogged arteries and capillaries, there is no movement. So a person can't go from point A to point B to go and do their job. That's like in your immune system. When you have so much diversity in your body that you're not allowed to make the connections, literally. Immune connections, vital organ connections, people don't survive. So yeah, a society with a clogged traffic system has a hard time surviving until they find different modes of transportation, different alternative ways to transport themselves versus getting into a car, you get into multi-car or multi, like what do you call it, um, carpooling and other ways. So anyway, so yeah, last night I was going through all the science stuff, all the science. And I, and I, what I did was I went and Googled, I asked Google, what is the science? List me all the laws of physics. And so it gave me, so whatever I copied and pasted last night with the pictures even, and what I copied and pasted was all the list of the laws of physics that at least Google gave me. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more, but that's what they gave me. If I wanted to go and find all the laws of physics, all the laws of biology, all the laws of chemistry, I can go do that and go Google all the laws of everything because it's not what you know when you think about it, like how much you've memorized, it's how you can find out the information. Because you should memorize only certain things that are pertinent, but you should be able to find out where to find out the information to confirm whatever hypothesis. So... You don't clog your brain with too much diversity or too much just ancillary information. So right now I have all my walls so much stuff. Eventually some of the stuff's going to come down, but it's necessary. because I got to figure out how I'm going to put it all together and 
what order I'm going to put it in, what order of operations. And so when I was doing all those copy and pasting, and I even transferred it over to my other page, so because, yeah, I wanted to, and I just like, okay, why, why am I torturing myself? Well, I'm, I'm watching, like, half hazardly watching The Walking Dead, because it's still going on right now. I haven't even finished the whole series of The Walking Dead, and that came out, like, who knows how long, and I'm still in the process. I think I'm on the 11th season. I think it's probably the last season, but I don't know. Anyways, and so I put all those formulas down, the laws of whatever down, and then... And with all the things, I, pictures and things I attached, like what I did this weekend, then I went to sleep. And I woke up, obviously, I woke up with a sentence in my mind. And that sentence was, like the thought that I was thinking when I woke up this morning was, let me go find it, was food will always be an issue to those who don't balance out their hormones with food. <laughs> yeah, people are starving. They're starving. Literally, they're starving. <laughs> Food will always be an issue to those who don't balance out their hormones with food. And you need all food. Let your system determine what it needs and what it doesn't need. And then you have an immune system and a filtration process to release the demons, whatever the body doesn't need. But you can't be the one to be like, well, I don't need milk and meat and cheese and eggs and fruits and vegetables. <laughs> but we have people who intellectualize life and they start dosing themselves with food and elements and remedies and supplements because they have a specific reaction. They have a specific way to react to something that they were told to react to. And they've characterized energy in their body as something bad versus something that needs to happen. But you, you can't tell that to people. They have to figure it out for themselves. So anyways, so I woke up with a thought in my mind. Food will always be an issue to those who don't balance out their hormones with food. And then... I was thinking about, it just came out of my mind about, when I was doing all those copy and pasting, I noticed a pattern in the language. What was being used all the time through all of those, those, those postings of the laws of physics. It was proportional and relative. So we know the theory of relativity by Einstein. He was fucking genius. Of course he was. And then proportional. Because there's always, there's a proportion, there's a constant, there's a variable, there's, you know, temperature, and there's mass and matter and all. So you have all the physics words, but every, but it seems the adjectives and the verbs, verbs, yeah, adjective verbs, <coughs> or adverbs, <coughs> is, was the words were relative and proportional. And I've always used, even in the last how many years, as I am speaking about the J world, everything is relative. Immortality is relative. Life is relative. Death is relative. Everything is relative to your belief system and your politics, religion, and science. So you can never say any absolutes because you have no idea what kind of beliefs this person holds within and how they characterize. And so you can always, the only way to protect yourself when you're talking about what you think is an absolute in your world, it's all relative. Everything is relative, 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 where it's relative where you come from. Disease relative to how much, you know, whatever you hold inside. Everything has to be preempted with the word relative because, again, you don't want to come from absolutes because your experience may not be somebody else's based upon what they are dealing with and their belief system. And so it's like, holy shit. I'll tell you, it's it, when you realize how to speak to the world, it's not as easy. It's not cut and dry as people think. Okay? And then when I was... Then I was, since I was in that mode of the science of, because that was all the physics laws was the science of this, the physics of that, proportional of this, relative to that. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, okay. So I got into the mode of the trainer, like, oh, the science of immortality. I Googled that. And that's, of course, they talk about how it's all relative to spiritual and biophysical and cures and everything else. Okay. And so then I'm like, oh, the science, the science of decay. Now we know entropy. Remember I put that down, the uh, the laws of thermodynamics is basically entropy. It's how heat gets used, how heat uses up the energy in its environment. But that's only one side of it. Now the whole thing with the J world is negentropy. But still, you don't want to go from entropy and die or negentropy and just get bigger and bigger and bigger and then explode. Okay, so we're not going from one extreme to the other. 
So then it's bypassing the hair flake limit. Because, again, you don't want to be like, well, I'm against entropy. I'm only for Nick entropy. And then you become as big as a house and you become a giant and then you have to be taken out. So then you got to go beyond the one side or the other type of situation, positive, negative, whatever. Then you got to look at what is the hay flick limit. And that's when I was looking at the science of, of decay and they mention the hay flick. And then senescence, because remember, senescence is about decay. The cell breakdown. Why does the cell break down? Because there's a lot of energy, the new energy or a lot of energy in the environment taking up resources, causing this person to decay. So when you're around, let's say you're a small person, like my husband. I'm a small person. My husband's larger than me. If I don't defend my life, because I'm in a war of microbes, even though we're not in a war actively, we're in a war of microbes. His energy can really overwhelm my energy. So then I have to really be careful how much energy I give to him. And what I allow him to take from me and vice versa. Because someone like me who's smaller than him would go into decay faster if I allowed him to usurp my energy. Because his presence is so influential. He's a very influential man and he knows it. And I know he knows it. So even though he physically he may outweigh me, I have to then outsmart him in certain areas. I don't want to say outsmart him, but find a different way to relate to him versus strength versus strength. Because I don't have the strength <laughs> to go up against him. So I have to have the brains to do that. Okay, and so that's how you, <laughs> so that's what decay is, is having an influential energy around you just sucking the resources out of you. So imagine when you go into a crowd of people and you weigh like 90 or 80 pounds and you keep going out to a crowd of people and hanging out with friends and family and doing drugs and alcohol and sex, you're not going to last very long. That's what I'm saying. The skinny people are going to be decaying faster if they don't get ahead of it when they're around the people who are, who are very influential. And it could be their friends or family, lifestyle, belief system, all that. Okay? So it's the hay flick limit is about um, realizing the the senescence when the body starts deteriorating. I don't know there's another scientific way to say it, but let me, I'll read it. What is it? It says, what is, what is it meant by the hay flick limit? Hay flick lim limit of hay flick's phenomena is defined as the number of times a normal cell population divides before entering the senescence phase. So every single time you're around energy, your cell, normal cell population divides and divides. And I even, when I watch Lucy and the Hulk and other science fiction shows where they're talking about scientists doing what they do to go and do experiments, they do show the animation of cells that are whole, like in Lucy, where it was one cell and it kept dividing and dividing and dividing and dividing and dividing. And that's, the whole integers, you know, negative times this, positive times that, whatever. Okay. And so then at the end of Lucy, that movie with Scarlett Johansson, then they shows the cell then undividing and coming together, coming together, coming together, becoming one. Okay. And so that's really what the family is. is there are basically a bunch of cells divided and then analyzed. And some people have strength. Some people have the strength. So you have certain knowledge in your body and then when you have a baby certain hormones and knowledge and programming are condensed in that baby and so that's why they do testing out there psychological testing intellectual testing academic testing so much testing to see what you were what your strengths are based upon the the sexual reproduction and then when we see children who are in mensa they had a whole common a conglomeration of of intelligence and intellectual capability and energy within that one child versus another child who might be like meant to go and throw throw bricks this child is meant for the brain this child's meant for bricks or this child's meant for going to be a courtesan one day so everyone has been programmed in a specific way Okay, and so we're all like fractions of a whole. Well, at some point, the system wants now people who are fractions and can't seem to become whole and gain what they lost during their lifetime and in utero. Well, they're going to be gone, and they want most people out there to be whole in the future. That's what my guess is, okay? And so I'm trying to offer that possibility if you're not too far gone, if you're not even a fraction of the fraction of the fraction of potential that you could have been, could have been, you know, that you would have been or that you were and that you kept dividing yourself dividing yourself 
and or decaying yourself around your lifestyle and belief system. So the hay flick limit is the phenomena is defined as the number of times a normal cell population divides before entering into senescence phase. And so when you're entering into that senescence phase, that's the aging process. And that's all based upon the environment. Okay, your environment can be accelerated, causing the senescence phase, the hay flick limit to realize itself sooner. That's what you're seeing right now with all the diet suddenlies, is that we have people who are realizing the hay flick limit faster because of their predisposed issues. They, it could be a certain blood types, it could be certain belief systems, it could be so many different things. And so the hay flick limit is different for everybody. And those who are bigger boned and bigger bodied and realizing my information sooner than those that are a smaller bone and smaller body, they have a better chance in surviving and redirecting versus a very skinny person because they have a lot to overcome and a lot to gain and a lot to lose. And it's like, fuck, yeah, I'll tell you, it's all, it's, and I knew there was a whole proportion that you take in so much energy, can you handle those resources? That's why I posted. That's why I posted. Um, uh, the science of problem solving is all relative to the proportional amount of problems one must solve within a specific period of time while simultaneously accessing resources to support that energy. Okay, so in other words, in a closed system, you have a certain amount of time to solve that problem before that problem becomes out of control. In an open system, you have a certain amount of time to solve that problem before that problem becomes out of control. Becomes out of control. How many resources must you burn in order to solve a problem? And do you have enough resources? Okay? And so when someone's small, they really have to gain some resources in order to solve that problem. And if they're starving and they're afraid of food, and they're taking in antibiotics and offspring that are working against them, they're not going to have enough resources to solve the problem of senescence, of decaying, faster than they're able to get ahead of that and reverse that situation. And so that's what I'm saying. When people are already afraid of food, and they're really skinny, and they're so like, like deter I mean, they're so on their bandwagon of hate and blaming. Yeah, they're not going to be able, they're, 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 the system has to watch them and regulate them so they don't become out of control and try to take people down with them on the way out the door. And so how many resources must you burn in order to solve a problem? And do you have enough resources? People will find that when they are starving, they don't have enough resources to solve their own problems in body, mind, and spirit. Essentially, they ran out of gas. Senescence caught up with them. They didn't realize they had to bypass the hay flick limit, okay? And they say that there's drugs out there, maybe. Well, they're actually, they're saying there's drugs for dogs to prolong their life. That, a drug that's able to bypass the hay flick limit. I don't know. Uh, I, I have no idea if it works or not. They say it does, FDA approved. Will people use it on the dogs? Potentially. And will, how would you know if it worked? How would you know if it worked or not? Because <laughs> everybody's hay flick limit is different. And who's to say that energy conversion or that immune system activation from that drug wouldn't put them over the edge? What about the, the you know, the, the food intake, the environment? There's so many factors to consider whenever you're taking something like a drug or a supplement or anything else to have a particular outcome. See, I just eat food and I poop every morning and make sure I release those demons. I cough, sneeze, and blow my nose and I rest when I'm tired. And that's pretty much it. I don't take any drugs to give me a specific outcome or a specific perceived outcome. I just know how to characterize the symptoms. I just know how to open up my immune system. I, I don't depend upon anyone out there remedying any kind of disease, even the notion of potentially dying. So here, I'm going to take a drug to stop me from dying. I'm not even going to go there. I just eat all the food. But what happens in the food? Well, as long as I have access to milk, meat, cheese, eggs, I don't care what they put in it. I don't care how much they put in it. My body's going to take what it needs and leave the rest. If the last couple months, I noticed a trend when I was focusing on specific foods like oatmeal or meat, like pork chops or steak <clears throat> or fruit or jello. <laughs> Or gosh, you know, um, cheese, like all, like uh, there's, and I would have it every single day, yams, like I'll eat ham every day right now because I'd be have leftovers, but I'd notice a trend. I haven't, or, or cream, 
an ice cream, okay? Well, there's a reason why my body would gravitate for, for like, let's say a week or two weeks or even a month. So much cream. Well, it needed to replenish the resources that were missing, okay? I'm not dosing myself based upon some test told me I was deficient in something. It was my body said, okay, I want cream. And so it had the cream every single freaking day. And I make whipped cream and all that. Then I had a bunch of ice cream. That was last summer. And I had a bunch of ice cream, a bunch of oatmeal, a bunch of, you know, tangerines, you know, a bunch of uh, so many different things that I would just have every single day. Last night I had raw cabbage at the end of my day. Like I had a bunch of venison. Well, I had those bratwurst type stuff, sausage we got from the meat place. I had a few of those and I had the cabbage. And I ate all of that with sour cream. I had, and I just, just completely took it in. Okay, so sometimes your body knows that it's deficient in something and it will gravitate towards a specific food that has those specific constituents that your body is missing. And I didn't have any tests tell me this. I didn't go to any professional and tell me what I'm, no. I just listened to my body because I have an immune system and I have more clarity of mind. And I don't have so much of the, the enemy inside of me telling me it wants like this, this, and that. No, now I have the parent cells who are finally in control teaching the juvenile cells how to do its job and telling me what I need to eat. And that sometimes includes venison. It will include meat, milk, cheese, eggs, and fruits, bread, whatever. Okay? And so, yeah. And so essentially they ran out of gas. People who are starving. Sen senescence caught up with them They when they realize the hay flick limit and they don't know how to redirect. And so that's what happens when you're 50 and you're menopause. You're reaching the hay flick limit. Now you have to redirect. You're not now a farm animal. Now you're supposed to be a mature human being, but people die with the notion that they're going to have menopause and they're going to die soon. And so then they already have a self-fulfilling prophecy that menopause means death. It means more drugs more hormone manipulation, more hormone replacement therapy, and get ready to pass away and get all your affairs in order and all that stuff. And so there's already a whole economics behind that self-fulfilling prophecy of death based upon milestones. And it's around 50 or so. And I'm 50 and I'm just realizing my potential. Okay. I've had a period since I probably, you know, late summer, early fall. And what are we in? Like December 4th? Okay. And so essentially those that are starving, they are running out of gas. Senescence is catching up with them. They didn't realize they had to bypass the hayflick limit. They had to start eating and they had to suppress, stop suppressing their own immune system. And so when you think about it, people are their own worst enemy and they could have been their own best friend. And that's the issue. That's when people are deteriorating and they're realizing the senescence, they're realizing the hayflick limit and they're deteriorating. And they're feeling like shit and they're pain and suffering. Then they're hunting for the enemy. Because then it will be a food, it will be the environment, it will be a drug or an oncology or something that will trigger them to feel something. or And then they will lay the blame. And that's where the whole Hitler mentality of the medical holistic system, looking for a hero, looking for a Satan, and scapegoating and then targeting. And so... That's why I'm really happy I experienced that kind of torture through the J-World because I saw the psychology of people when I don't even know them and they're like 6,000, 2,000, 1,000 miles away from me and they deem me as the enemy to, to such an extent that the hatred is so obvious that you see them radicalizing people in the hate groups and that's what the system is watching. They're watching because they know if it's not the salt or the sugar or the carbs, or whatever, then it's some politician, it's some rich person, it's somebody that was taking part in the wars back in Vietnam. I mean, you saw, like, I posted that picture where someone in a chemtrails group says that Rothschild and Rockefeller and um, Soros and Bernanke, whatever his name is, and uh, Kissinger are all the enemy to humanity. Okay. And so they're like, Hey, no, the, no, the enemy, these men rule the world. Okay. And so that's somebody's scapegoat when they can't handle change in their finances in the economy. Cause we couldn't do what we're doing for the last 
100 years, forever. Everything has to change. People don't like change. And so I said, bypass the hay flick limit. You'll find out there is no enemy and there is no savior. When you realize the hay flick limit, you will find an enemy and a savior to give you absolution. And that's every single thing in the politics, religion, and science. That's explaining religion through science when you think about it. The system knew you were going to blame someone as soon as life became what you think is difficult. Okay. Privileged people who have been given everything will look for an enemy and someone who they think, and someone who they were told did whatever to, to them, caused them pain and suffering. So you see, people are getting, they have their Lyme disease. They have, they have other diseases. And so they focused on the chemtrails. They focused on the iron somewhere. They focus on the fluoride in the water, okay, which is a, which one amongst many elements that are in your whole environment, not just in your water. Or they'll focus on the Jilly world because of the Dr. Phil show and those who survived what they could have died from were blaming me that I caused harm to them when it was already within them. It was just a matter of time before something would have triggered it. But the J world activated their immune system like it was supposed to. Although we didn't know how to characterize it in that way. But we said, hey, you're going to feel this, this, and this. But people are actively trying to mitigate against that when you really couldn't. People die from the symptoms that are out there when it's not supported with food and rest and understanding what's going on. But not everybody does. But when you preempt something before it actually happens organically, the chances, obviously, I think what we've seen in the J world is that they preempted stuff that was going to happen organic that would have happened organically they would have died from it, but they survived it because they preempted it before it happened organically when they didn't have enough resources to support them so you can imagine those who are getting heart attacks and stroke today they're dying because they didn't have enough of the nor infant infrastructure and the food supply to support them maybe they were born during you know maybe 20 years ago and the environment causes increased senescence right the environment the higgs boson the, the the thermodynamics in the the particle acceleration is accelerating the decay process faster and people are already in deficits so they're deteriorating faster so they're not surviving their lifestyle the parents aren't changing they're sending their kids off out there onto the soccer field the football field the marathon field and so these kids are dying suddenly because the parents don't get what the hell's going on or they're just out there gallivanting, traveling everywhere, taking on resources, taking on the energy that's causing the hay flick limit to realize itself sooner. And then you get died suddenly. So you get like the 10 plagues, the firstborn. And that's all relative, right? That gets sacrificed to the system. Okay, so that's how privileged the West is. The system knew how you were going to raise your children because later on down the road, when they program the people, they need to, all methods will be acceptable in different experiential circumstances. But in the meantime, we'll watch so many Hitlers out there coming out of their slumber and start pounding the gavel of blame because they're deteriorating. If somebody's saying that your friends and family and these people are the enemy, then who's your friend? Because I'm saying that, you know, people say that some stranger out there is the enemy, but it's really their friends and family are the enemy because they're fighting the microbial wars. They're fr it's like you have a very influential friend who's like 12 feet tall and huge. Their microbes are going to cannibalize yours. Or you have someone that's relatively, you know, proportional to them, then it's back and forth. They're just trading those things back and forth. But if you're smaller, then you'll be cannibalized by those who are more influential around you. And so if somebody is saying that your friends and family and these people are the enemy, like that meme, then who's your friend? Don't you get it? You're supposed to be your friend to yourself. Because in all reality, the, bow the battle is out there, but you take home the enemy in your body. The battle is the programming within you, interwoven with your senescence as your body is breaking down. Bypass the hay flick limit, you'll find there is no enemy. And that's essentially what I, I figured out last night. Well, not I figured out last night, I figured out this morning after I slept on it. <laughs> that's the thing about when you have a problem, you sleep on it. But when people are so deteriorating and so full of diversity and they have their lives on their belief systems and all the distractions... They'll sleep on stuff, but it they'll but they may not even solve they might. I can't say they won't. But some people have trouble sleeping, so they're taking drugs, so of course they're not gonna be able to they're drugging even the workers in their body as their the body is trying to solve problems, but they drugged the things that would actually solve the problems in their body. That's why people who go to sleep high will not survive. 
because you have to have your body be able to work out the problems or you might die in your sleep, die suddenly. You are a a candidate for a diet suddenly when you don't allow your body to work the way it's supposed to. So that's why I figured out, oh, the science of life, how much time do you think you have and or are you uh, utilizing the resources in your environment properly and effectively, right? So the science of problem solving is all relative to the proportion amount of problems one must solve within a specified amount of time while simultaneously accessing resources to support that energy conversion. Right? And then the science of immortality is relative to what your time, what you think life is proportional to the atmosphere and the lifestyle you live within. It's all relative. And then I'm like, oh, the science of immortality in the J world bypassed the hay flick limit. And you need food, not the fucking drugs. But again, they're going to develop a drug that they will say will prolong your life. But again, you don't know where people are when it comes to where they are realizing the hay flick limit. And I'm so glad there's a word to explain where I'm coming from because that's what I was essentially looking for. How was I going to simplify talking about the J juice using physics and chemistry? Because I knew there was a, I knew there was a formula. There was a physics law, a biological law that needed to be recognized to understand that. So then I understood now what racism is because of the whole, oh, the 12 tribes of Israel and Ashkenazi versus the Ethiopian or African Jews. And that's the racism. That's the anti-Semitism. That is the intolerance. And even commenting in that one group that I showed you. And I don't even need to go through all my timeline. I might, but I don't even think I really need to go through that timeline. Because people will people will make assumptions. Well, what will they do? They'll believe whatever story was given to them. Though when you go all the way back to the beginning, right back to Genesis, to 241,000 years ago, that they weren't taking out the Africans. They weren't doing eugenics on the Africans and turning them into all blonde hair, blue eyed. But that's some of the perceptions out there because they're only taking it back to maybe the last 100, 200 years, maybe even the last 100 years when we had World War One, and then we had Hitler trying to develop the Aryan race and have only blonde hair and blue eyed and that's it. And then of course the 1860s with all the slavery. Okay. But when you think that we all came from Africa, it was the Africans that were enslaving the other Africans way back in the beginning of Africa and the pharaohs. Okay, because you can start, you see that the pictures, some of the reliefs that show the giants, which were the pharaohs and their smaller humans that they were playing with, messing with, raping, impregnating, using human slavery. And then there was torture too, because that's what was done back then. And we still have that in our society today, people torturing each other in body, mind, and spirit, even virtually. If given the chance, they would do it. Because they don't like you, they don't like your belief system, they don't like what you look like, they don't like what you stand for. So then we have the intolerance on either end. And so then you, that's where you get the, the racism, where the blacks don't like the whites, and the whites don't like the blacks, and then there's the Jew, then you mix in the whole Jewish thing, the fake Jews versus the real Jews, and now you get the anti-Semitism, and you get the blame game. And the system knows how easy it is to radicalize people. You just give them someone to blame for their problems. Like I was blaming the antibiotics from when I was a kid. That could have been, but who knows who's to say how many little spirits in my body that I came across the last 49 years was taking up residence that had to be released to my immune system. And so even though I had that kind of like a pneumonia, mycoplasmic pneumonia that is now all is, is spreading, I had that a few years ago where I could barely move when my dog was still alive before she died in that November. She, we were, we were both experiencing so much stuff. Okay. People are, I was blaming the antibiotics, but someone else could have blamed the chemtrail. Someone else could have blamed the fluoride in the water. Someone else could have blamed this. Somebody, I mean, that's the thing. Okay. So when people are dying, they will blame and, and they, and they will. And so now you're watching a, dying society being given something to blame thank god the system gave you air food water and gmo and animals and food and this and that to blame so that way you're not focusing just on one race just on one thing you have a myriad of choices to blame your parents your friends you know the guy down the street you know whatever 
but you're not supposed to harm anyone that you blame. You, ha you have a right to your beliefs that is this person's fault, that thing's fault, this is this fault, whatever. You have a right to your beliefs, that's fine. But you're not allowed to harm somebody else in the process. You talk about your experiences and that's what Facebook is for. You think that your way is the best way, well then you go prove it. Go go be the guinea pig. And so when someone said in that in that line, or that comment line, when I said that we're all African and white people, are just Africans who had to evolve to their surroundings based upon the sun position in the sky and the geographical location. And you could be Caucasoid, Mongoloid, and Negro to one person, but yet to live longer than 200 years, 100 years. And a person in the North could turn, a person who's African or who's black in the North could turn white over time and vice versa. She's like, well, prove it. Well, then you be the guinea pig. You prove it. You, if you're, if you're from Africa and you're black and you want to see how your melanin could eventually disappear and turn white, first of all, you have to understand not to treat disease. That's what I was proposing. Is you don't treat disease, you stop starving yourself, and you don't intend to die and reproduce, and you live up in the north, and you'll have to go through the pains of the body releasing the melanin and changing. Yeah, it's painful. You be the guinea pig if you want the proof that what I'm saying is true. You're not going to believe me, so you be the proof. Stop treating disease, eat all food, and don't intend to die and reproduce. But see, that hasn't been introduced. They're like, oh my God, that's so, that's horrible. You're going to kill me, <laughs> you know? So then I have to be the one to exemplify my belief and that I am the proof. But see, you wouldn't believe me because, so then we all just be representation. It's not about proving it to think. Any, to anything to anyone is developing a storyline based in science that can be the theory could be um, credible in science but you still need the time time is going to bring out whatever truth you want time will be the proof and the whole J world we don't have enough time behind us to prove the theories but the theories that we have are sound in science if you understand you need food, water, and air, and maybe you don't need to remedy all your diseases, and maybe you need to look at your lifestyle and belief system because there are giants in your world. They may not be giant like 50 feet tall, but there are very influential people in your world who are taking so many resources from you that you can't get ahead. And it's people that you surround yourself with, it's your lifestyle, your belief systems, who you hang out with, that are sucking the life out of you. That, yeah, you won't see immortality. And it could be even your practices in remedying things, developing offspring, sucking the life out of you. Okay, so everything is based in physics. And finally I figured out, oh yeah, the hay flick limit. <laughs> Holy shit. After all those posts of all these different formulas, physics laws, which you must know. But when you expose yourself to so much diverse information, and you intend to release the demons, right? There will be an organized thought process at some point if you intend to have an organized thought process. But if you intend to be an activist and blame someone or look for a savior, then yeah, go into the religious world. That's your world when, where science is like, okay, when you're in the religious world, science can manipulate the shit out of you because they understand the science of propaganda, the science of manipulation, the science of belief, the science of hormonal influence, because now you look at all the love, love, love people who are obviously, well, not obviously, who are actively taking cannabis and other love drugs. And so then they become gurus and spiritual. And then there are texts based upon those who are, who were under the influence, writing all these different things, and then people are regurgitating what is written out there. And they become their own guru with their own spin on whatever they want. That's the 1960s. And that's also the, the Renaissance period. That's all those different periods where people were writing stuff based upon what was influencing their hormones, the four humors. Sanguine, sanguine, neutral, angry, and and sad and melancholic and then you get the music and you get the poetry you get the stories oh gosh it's so <laughs> complex but then it's not really when you understand the science behind influencing people's behaviors and their belief systems in their religion and so that's why you don't want to say the Ashkenazi Jews are the fake Jews no they just had more time 
to understand humans. They allow themselves to evolve and feel the pain of suffering. Suffering is your superpower. You take away people's suffering, they die. But you want them to suffer so much because they'll die because they don't have enough resources to manage that suffering. But you don't want to suffer forever and you don't want to not suffer enough. And so it's a balance. And of course, you're not supposed to make anyone in your world suffer unless there is a specific protocol behind it that will end suffering without killing you in the process. And again, it's just like, wow. So I just talk about my stuff. I don't intend anyone to really get this. I Some of you will get it because you get it. Some of you will not, and I understand that. But there is an actual scientific term called the Hayflick limit. And that's the J world where you bypass the Hayflick limit with food, not with drugs. And so I don't really need to go too much down my timeline. I mean, I can go and belabor every single point, but that would then be like, ugh. But I will go and figure out how to put this all together. But that's why you see the racism. That's why you see the split of those who think are fake or not. That's why you see the blame game. That's why you see such intolerance. People are dying. Dying people will look for an enemy and also worship a savior. And they will galvanize together in gangs. And the system knows this. The system knows this. That's why you're in a surveillance society. All right, bye.